This is the base of a Brower top hatch incubator unit. This is the one I prefer for actually hatching the chicks. As you may recall, I brewed the chicks in the styrofoam incubators because they hold heat temperature so well and they're stable. So then we go to the top hatch unit for actual hatching because it comes apart and the components go right in the dishwasher and are easy to clean. This is the unit that the eggs go in and it's the unit that you'll be cleaning most often. Notice that there's a groove on the bottom. This groove lines right up with an arm that's on the bottom of the base unit. This unit turns around slowly and with the eggs inside it becomes the automatic turner. It ends up turning back and forth and rolling the eggs. Okay, this is the hatching unit that's on the base now. This is part of the Brower top hatch incubator. Now this is a forced air unit. The fan is shrouded inside of this cylinder here. The air forces past this light bulb, which is a 60 watt bulb. You want to make sure that you have plenty of backup light bulbs in the event that this one goes out. You won't have time to go shopping. Now the way the unit functions is the eggs sit in between these partitions on this plastic coated screen. The frame rotates back and forth but these partitions remain stationary so as the eggs sit against them the eggs will roll over and over and it only shifts about 20 degrees each direction and that's enough to turn the eggs on an hourly cycle. There's also a preset slot in one of the partitions so that you can put your thermometer in. And again because it's a forced air unit we run it at 99.5. The best part of the whole thing is all these parts are plastic. They come apart, we can put them inside the um, dishwasher and it sanitizes the whole thing between hatches and then we just put it all back together. With all the parts in, one of the best features of this for kids is that the entire top is clear and they can watch the hatching process. It also comes with the vent plugs which as I said before I like to leave out completely because I like a good air exchange. But you decide based on your atmosphere environment if it's really, for example, dry where you live, then you want to leave some of these in place and take one or two out just to maintain the proper humidity level. The best indicator of proper humidity is, of course, the air cell size in the egg during the hatch period, during the incubation period. Control for the heat. You turn it clockwise to increase the heat and counterclockwise to turn it down. When you're first setting the unit up, Turn it clockwise so that the heating light stays on. Watch the thermometer inside the unit and when it hits 99.5, that's when you turn it counterclockwise until the light goes out. Then as the light flickers on and off, you'll be able to fine tune the temperature within the incubator unit. So remember, during the first 18 days of incubation, I have the eggs in the styrofoam unit and they're using the automatic turner. And then after the 18th day, I transfer them into this top hatch unit, but I disengage the automatic turner because the eggs will remain stationary. The problem with this unit, and my only real complaint, is that it's noisy. And that's what you have to listen to all the time. So I use it for the last, last three days of incubation. And then the chicks hatch, and then we get them into a brooder. You can see this egg getting a tiny crack. This is called pipping. And once the shell is pipped or cracked through, the chick may still take another 24 hours to completely come out of the shell. Looking through one of the ventilation holes, we can see another egg starting to pip. It's important not to open your incubator during this period. Even when a chick comes out, leave the lid on and let the others hatch. During the pipping process, the chicks will actually talk to one another through their shells, and this encourages the rest of the hatch to start pipping as well if they haven't already.